Hello and welcome to episode number 48 of the Boxing Social podcast in association with Betfred. My name's Declan Taylor, I'm your host. Joining me today is Barry Jones. Remind them, Barry, what have they got to do with this video? You're good at this. Like, share and subscribe. And uh, leave a comment as well. Ah, oh, leave a comment make sure well, about the like, about how, about you, how like, much you like how it. You like it and who you shared it with and why you subscribe. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. So, big one, big guys. One of my favourite things in the world, I reckon, is two light heavyweights from Britain having a, having a fight. And that's where yeah. we're going to start with. And we don't get it that often. And we've no. got a big one. Joshua Boatze against Craig Richards. Two of those names that we're always kind of trying to put together and they're finally coming together. About time, eh? It's about time. Not um, them two particular, just about time that some of our top yeah. heavyweights. We had Yard, we had Arthur, but for the most part, they're kept apart. But until now, you could say. Yeah. It's an interesting one because, I know you see it, but Joshua Boatze was always massively hyped, rightly so, or... or you know, yeah, or course, not. Yeah, right, so and then yeah. Craig Richards massively overlooked for most of his career. And in reality, they're both far closer together than than yeah. those two sort of narratives would suggest. They are, but you know, one won an Olympic medal and one never. Yeah. That's, that's just how, how things work. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's a, you know, he's gone in, he's gone, he turned professional you know, with a market value. Mm. So he was pushed and Richards didn't. And you know, that's just that's just how the game works. And, and so it should, unfortunately, for Richards. But Richards has done his apprenticeship, and, yep. and he and he's got to where he is, and you know, and, and he got that world title shot against Bivol out of the blue, and even though he lost, and he did lose, I know that him and his camp thought they might have maybe nicked it, but they didn't, but they, they did well, better than we all expected, and I think that's now gave him a foot in, it was giving him a foot in, and also an argument why you why you could maybe beat beat um, Boatzi. Yeah, I I was a massive fan of Boatzi in the Olympics. He looked like the guy out of everyone who would just slide into the program so easy just be a natural you've seen Josh Kelly you know, look the guy he's going to be great years because he looks the part and he got flashy style but Boatsy looked like the one who would just the transition would be no trouble at all mm. and it hasn't really been just I think his World Series of Boxing background helped that and he was ready made wasn't he yeah. and you saw that in the Olympics but he stopped that pro career yeah. no really he should have been he should have been there he should have been he should have fought for a world title by now I, I feel that it was his, his, his pedigree and ability and, 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 and his start, the way that he fights, I think he should have been, but it's been a bit of a stop star career. Mm. But this fight's great. So, but we wouldn't have got this fight. I think this fight's a good good fight. And stylistically, the toughest fight for Boatze. Yeah. Remember, Richards is boxed at a higher level and Boatze hasn't. Mm. Though I think Boatze's a favourite and a, quite a big favourite, I feel, to be fair. But... um. Just because of variety, and I think he can just fight at a higher pace than Richards, possibly. See again, so oh, everything's everything for this fight is going to be maybe, possibly, I think, because there's still loads of unknown. Mm. Bob Watty, yeah. I mean, the Bolotniks was a really good performance. because Bolotniks is tough and in, in too bad as it goes. He can punch fair. as well, yeah. And, I, and that's a live less. That was a lovely good fight to give you a gauge of where you're going to go. Mm. And he sort of beat him up. Mm. I think you know he beat him up, didn't he? Let's be truthful. And um. Yeah, and Richard, you know, Richard looked good, and but, and you no, know, the Pitters was a, was a good win, of course. But you know, we're, we're basing Richards off his performance against Bivol, totally. Yeah. Let's be honest, that, and we have to be truthful about it. They're totally basing him off that one, that off his off a defeat. Yeah, which is always a dangerous thing to do because, you know, you can be good in defeat, but you still got beat. Yeah, and it was a high level and, and made a step too far for 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 him at that at that particular time, but. You know, it's still that's where we're that's where we're basing him off. But but he's been but we can base him that he's boxed at a higher level, so you'll come in with more confidence now thinking I did well there and you know Boatsy hasn't been to the level I've been at. So I can put him in his place early. I, it all depends about the jab of Richards, because that needs to be working really well for him like he like he has in the past. Like it, if he can if he can dictate the 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 jab, the the, the battle of the jabs, which is no easy feat against Boatsy. No. Then he got a chance, and the, the only thing I worry about Boatsy is he's, he's, he's you can hit with the right hand. I don't think he's too hard to hit with the right hand. Yeah, his head, he has, doesn't move his head. Yeah, he has his hand side, but there's a gap around the back, around the back here, and he gets hit. He gets hit there quite often, more often than he should, and that's where I think there well, that might be because Richard's sort of level double jab right, lovely double jab right hand. But he goes jab jab, and he really turns with the right hand, sort of throws it, sort of leans over it if you like, but he gets loads of extension on it, and that's one that might be where. Boatsy has trouble, but I just think that there's more variety in the work of Boatsy, and I do think that he'll be able to fight at a higher pace. And and I, I sort of fancy him 
quite big, to be mm. honest. He hasn't gone the he hasn't gone the distance since his six rounder days. Really, I think 2018 was the last time. And you know, bearing in mind we both and everyone has sort of pumped the brakes a bit on him. The fact is, he's been stopping everyone. Still. Yeah, he's yeah. still been stopping it. even Chalich when he had some trouble. Belotniks, which is a hard fight, he still gets the he gets it job done, doesn't he? But Richards, elusive. You know, he's called the Spider because of his range and he's hard, hard to hit and whatever. It, he is kind of elusive. It, I think it would be a good. It would be a bit of a statement if he if if Richards were, if Boatsy went out and stopped it. Yeah, I. T- because he hasn't been stopped, Richard, you don't know. You might have a great chin and, yeah. and he's had the hit and durability and all that. But I think it's in, it might be within Boatsy to do it because I think because the way Richard is going to fight him, I think Richard is going to be really active with the jab that it, it's going to make Boatsy fight at a high pace. Mm. He's going to be coming forward. He's going to be trying to stalk Richard's down. That, that's how you sort of see it. I just think there's just more variety, in not just the, the punches of of, of Boatsy, but the movement as well. Mm. I think, and even though he's he's the well, they're both the same sort of stamp in height yep. and reach, but I think Boatsy will get lower, yeah, and can be able to come inside the jab. And again, it's, it's all about the jab. I think that jab for Richards, if he can work it hard and quick early in the fight, get established it early in the fight, then Boatsy got to work off that. But also, if the jab's not effective. It's going to be a hindrance, not a help for Richards, because then if he pauses with it, or is not throwing it with the confidence, then Boatsy, the jab there, Boatsy be able to use that jab to he'll mount an attack off the jab. Yeah. It, that'll do, rather than feint his way in, which I think the feint for Richards should work, actually. That's what he needs to be working on, trying to draw, trying to, trying to make Boatsy fire before he's ready. Real solid feint. And then a little step back and catch him as he's coming in. But I think if he th- if 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 the jab's not effective enough, Boatsy will use that as that will be his punch to counter off. He'll go underneath it, come over the top of it, and slide in the distance off that jab because because as he's coming back slow, he'll use that. He'll just follow the ba- he'll follow the jab back in, just follow it in and come in with a shot of his own. Mm. And then when he gets inside, they tend to think unless Richards can tie him up, then he'll work away and he'll be the physically stronger. Mm. T- again, like I said, I think I tend I'm saying I think every time because I think. Because I think, um, still we don't know. We don't really know. I, I'm still like, Boatsy's still one of those, all potential, but we haven't really quite seen it yet. Yeah. But I know Blotniks we've seen a bit of it to be fair, and and also I think I think except for Bivol, I think you know I think Boatsy's boxed a better quality of opposition as well. I think. Yeah. And he's had and also he's had his. No, that was a Kalich, wasn't it? Kalich was the one, yeah. That was a lockdown fight where he topped the bill and he got hit a bit, but he he did stop him. Mate, he went he went southpaw for like ten seconds yeah. and then he got stopped at that point. But I I I like the fact that he's had to go through that little yeah bit yeah of adversity. I know what you, you mean, know what yeah. I mean? yeah. But I I see like I like I really like Craig Richards, but that's not that I'm getting one of those now. I really like him. No, I'm the same. I'm no, I'm a big. It's irrelevant whether I like him or not. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I favour Boatsy quite big. Yeah, he's. Having said that, he's six to one on Richards. out was seven to two, so quite wide for a top of the bill. Yeah, but I, do, I I I I see odds odds nowadays. Like I don't gamble, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just I just pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Whoever's the bigger name gets the bigger odds. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I, who's making the odds? Are they real? But do they? Do they what, are they studying these two fighters? Yeah, they might yeah. do. By the way, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. There'd be a bit of that. It seems a bit well, wide yeah. to me. It seems a bit exactly. wide. Yeah, I think it's a bit wide. But I, yeah. do, I fancy him big actually. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But I do think it's a really evenly matched fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Because yeah, there's too many unknown factors in there for me. I think. Yeah. Because again, Richard, you know, he's got like he might be intimidated by Batsy. He wasn't against Bivol. Mm. But but Bivol doesn't fight with the same intensity as Boatsy does, though he's though he's a, though he's a, on paper a much better fighter than he's boxed at a higher level. It's a different he, he works his way in. Where Boatsy I think will start a little, a little bit faster and want to be a little bit though Boatsy is structured with his work. I think in this fight he want to go out and, and 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 put Richard and he should anyway and put Richards under pressure early. I think he think that's what I, Virgil Hunter's the the worry. Mm. Who wants Virgil Hunter in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, by the way, because he'll make him. You, you, no, he likes a thinking fighter. Yeah. If we go off the Andre Wards, which is to, to, no really what he's known for. Where he did the same with Khan as well. A bit reined him in a bit and yeah, tried to but, do that. But I think Boatsy needs to start fast and be aggressive. Yeah. To be honest, in this one, for mm. me, not not you know, unabandoned of course, but I think he needs to be aggressive. Needs to be the one pushing the pace. 
Because you again, Rich is that double jab right hand that he that he that he can throw so effectively. He can't do that if he's moving back. No. One thing I did wonder, and obviously the names I'm about to list are not in Buatzi's class, but he's Craig Richards has beaten. He had the big fights against Jake Ball, Andre Sterling, yeah. and certainly Shakam yeah. Peters. Fights, domestic fights, a lot riding on him <laughs> when he had to rise to the occasion, and he really, really did. So he's proven that he can do that, and yeah. that he's made for that. This, I think this, yeah, he has. This, I think this is a different level. Cause yeah, of course, yeah. But, but he's at the. He's at, and also, unfortunately for him, the the world title fight was in lockdown, so yeah. there's no a bit crowd. Of a weird there. one, yeah. But there's presumed there's going to be a big crowd in the O2 yeah. for this. No guarantee that, of mm. course, but just here it is, and it's a, it's a, no, again, it seems like a big plat. It's on the zone, but it seems like a big plat. Yeah, plat big plat London plat. derby in there. Yeah, so mm. it's it's different pressure. But yeah, the fact that he has, you know, Andre Sterling was a derby yeah. of sorts. But yeah, I do think that. Um, oh, no, you say that. Rich has been has been fantastic. Yeah, and, ju and just because he's he's done most of his work under the radar, so to say, so so to say, doesn't mean that he can rise. You know, no, you know, but. You tend to think that the guy who's had the the, 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 the flashlight on him throughout his career copes better with pressure because he's had pressure from as soon, soon as he's turned professional. But it doesn't mean that he's the better fighter. But I do think overall, I do think that Boazzi probably is the better fighter. Mm. Good fight. And it will come down to that. Good fight. And I, and, I, and I do think that, you know, I'm glad we're seeing it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I do, cause it don't hurt either one. Whatever the result, by the way. I mean, it hurts Richards more if he gets beat because he's not a bigger name. But if Boatsy were to get beat, that's not great for him. He just got to take a bigger gamble when he comes back. Mm. But it's still, you know, it's still a fight that he can come back to, come back from. That's what I feel. Mm. If he's competitive, that's by the way. Unless he gets blasted out, then there's too many question marks over you know, his desire, chin, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, yeah, I don't see anyone getting blasted out early. But I think. Yeah, I think if there was a stop, it should be Boatsy. But I, I think Boatsy wins on points, and I, in a, in a competitive fight where he's up by three or four points. Yeah. Um, w let's hope it signals a bit of a sea change, and we do start getting a lot more of these fights in this division. Yeah. Because Eddie Hearn spoke about it; he has the power to do it. Of clearly, he's done it here. But if you look across the division, a bit wider now, so we've got. Buatzi, Callum Johnson, Callum Smith, Anthony Yard, obviously Craig Richards, Lyndon Arthur coming back, didn't look great in the rematch against Yard, but he's still there. Do you still feel that Buatzi is the best or potential to emerge as the, the one out of all of them? I don't know. And how much will, will Saturday night help to I think, sort of... I, yeah, I think you've got to say the jury's still out on him. I just I think, you know, at the beginning, I, I was all Buatzi. Yeah, same. Even though I was working, you know, for the broadcast, who were pushing Anthony Yard, who mm. hadn't put a foot wrong, I always thought Boatsy just a much better all-round fighter than, than him. Just doesn't have the same sort of power. But the way Yard fought against um, Lyndon Arthur in the second fight, if he can, if that's his new style where he's busy, no, he's not being, he's not looking for the perfect shot all the time. He, he's create, he's not waiting for the perfect shot. He's creating the opportunity to land that perfect shot then he's really hard to beat, I think. Yeah. Really hard to beat, because he has that horrible power where he hits you anywhere and you feel it, and and that could be a danger. So, so I don't, I'm not quite sure, I mean, to be honest. I, it's one of those I swing back and forth, and I don't really swing back and forth. Mm. I'm not a swinger. And <laughs> I've heard different. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to go somewhere else with that, but it's not, <laughs> it's not like, but yeah, it's, um, but I, yeah, but I am with him. Yeah, yeah. Again, because neither one, ne ne none of them have had that real. Push. No, they've all got. They've. All, there's the. If you think about Callum Johnson, you think fit firing Callum Johnson. He's the best of the lot. But will we ever get it? And will we ever get one with momentum and I, I think with a good run of fights? One of the most unluckiest fighters in recent yeah, years, completely. Callum Johnson. Bless yeah. him. But I, I, I got a horrible feeling. It's, it's only based off my own little feeling. Like there's no, no, no real basis to it that he's gone over the, over the. He's tipped over the hill a bit. You reckon? Johnson yeah. just been waiting on the silence for yeah, so long yeah, hard, his yeah. almost career has just been wasted for no fault of his own injuries and just you no know, managerial promotional things whatever it's been but he's just been wasted and then he had that he had that opportunity with Joe Smith you know, in lockdown was it last January mm. maybe and then that didn't go ahead he got Covid didn't he yeah. and just think oh that was that's just sums up your whole career that completely made. yeah yeah. and then you've got Callum Smith who's always looked like made yeah, for the division but you Smith, forget about right? him and yeah. you think if he gets a run and he he's strong at the weight, he's obviously massive and big enough for it. 
But you kind of wonder so what's going on with Callum Smith because you, you kind of. Well, he's at that stage now, but he is he, probably he's demanding more money. Completely, he's achieved it all, and, and yeah. yeah, so he demands more money than what the broadcasters will not able to pay him. Yeah, I would feel that would be the case unless it's a world title shot. Mm. That might be the case with all of them. Maybe yeah. you know, they same all, with Yard. They, they all got, they've all been paid too much money. Yeah, has got like a really good good money for for, yeah. for the Kovalev. So he's that's in your mind there, and that's well, that's my marker. Yeah. So I'll take a bit less, a little, quite a lot less for these certain fights. But hang on a minute, this is where I really belong. Yeah. When in reality, they don't really belong there. Not mm. yeah, not I'm taking Yard yeah, in yeah. general, you know. So and and yeah, so I just think that where the other fighters like Richards will just take whatever because he just, you know, I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment, you know, that I was. You know, a year, two years ago, so I'll just keep taking it because I'm working my way up. Yeah, it's a different level to that, and it might be the same with um, with what's the name of Boatsy? Yeah, he might be getting paid too much. Money. I bet he is. Yeah, I bet he because the Olympics and all. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, so the other had a deal there, and then obviously the the zone deal. They probably you know, to get them all over there. Probably promised them more than they could really afford. Yeah, or or not afford more than he wanted to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're looking for the right fights that that can that can that can generate that much money back for him. So, yeah, but we shouldn't get worried about what they're earning not just what the fights you want to see but I think that's the reason why we're not probably seeing some of these fights because yeah. if Boatsy boxes Yard that goes pay-per-view it's not pay-per-view fights mm. no no stress the imagination but for the money they want they how else you going to you gonna put that fight on yeah. this is pay-per-view you can't put it on can you mm. that's the problem it's ridiculous yeah. I think that's the stage we're at now with people everyone wants to go on pay-per-view yeah people want more money for less people watching them They'll take the gamble. Uh, let's have a look at the undercard. Robbie Davis Jr. is back for the first time since he stopped Hank Lundy. That was in December Yeah. Uh, against Javier Molina. Do you think he's got time to... Because he had a few defeats. Yeah. If Valenzuela was the, the guy that was a couple of women's out last year sometime. Yeah. Do you think he's got time and the ability to get back up in the upper echelons of that division? I Because think... you're only ever a couple of good wins away, aren't you? You are, but I, I, I don't ever see him reaching the highest height. Yeah. But he's really good. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lovely style. He punches his weight, you know, and, 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 he's, and he's a good boxer. He's got a lovely movement. He unravels a bit when he gets hurt, to be fair. But yeah, I just don't... It's, the problem is he's around those weights where they're really just, at the minute, they're just really good. Mm. I mean, exceptionally good. So I just don't see him beating any of the top guys. What is he now? Thirty-one. Yeah, maybe? I think he's thirty-one. Yeah. And can he can he park his career for eighteen months until those fighters have moved on? Because mm. what think. you're waiting for in that division is the belt starting to, to yeah. fragment and so, so opportunity to come. Yeah, I can. I just don't see he can't wait around that long. Yeah. No, he needs to be pushing forward now because again he has some losses and and he is as good as he looks when he does win. He does look vulnerable sometimes and he mm. can get beat. So yeah. I, I don't think, but that's no. We're, we're, we're always judging people by world level. Yeah. Why? What's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He's fun to watch, and and he's and he's a, he's a European level fighter all day long, which is a fantastic yeah. achievement. Oh, well, European champion. Not to him. He's the everyone wants to fight for the world title yeah. nowadays. But the, the, I think if we're a bit more realistic. He's boxing at a fantastic level where he where he belongs, where he's comfortable at. Yeah, that's the truth. But if you were to say match him against Jack Catterall for instance, who, you, you know, in all, all intents and purposes should be a world champion now. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, a good fight. Of course, yeah, yeah, you know, when you put it like that, it sort of is, isn't it? Yeah. But I think... If he's we base, 32, by the way. Just cool. like if we base Jack on his last fight, yeah. he's going to... No, the Jack before the Taylor fight, then that's the, him and Robbie Davis is it's a pick a, is a pick and fight. fight. Yeah, yeah. It's a pick and fight. It's mm, a pick completely. and fight. Because Jack looked fantastic. I've done a couple of most of Jack's career. Yeah. And Jack's looked fantastic. He's also looked like a fighter who just, who, a lot of the times, even though he won, he's always did a bit. Always wanted to look pretty. Mm. He wanted to look good rather than be good. That's what I've said all the time. That's my little saying. Yeah. He wanted to look good rather than Put be good. Put on a t-shirt. I'd buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and but then the way he stepped up another level now, and I think if if that's the new Jack Hatchell where we what we saw it against Josh Taylor, then it's not a competitive fight against Robbie Davis mm. Jr. I mean, Robbie Davis Jr. will have his moments. But Jack will just be because he's shown the toughness that he never knew he had, mm. and yeah, and his skills were just were something else on on against Josh Taylor. So I think that there's a fight above. And again, you know, you wouldn't you would fancy Josh Taylor against Robbie Davis Jr. Of course, yeah, 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 of course. And um, yeah, it's again, it's a hard weight. And, and even people like Sapida, 
you know, even people yeah. like even no, even true. people like Sapida. Yeah, yeah. No, that's but that's the way that it is. Completely. You no, know, even uh, even people like Pedraza. Yeah. You know, st- you know, they, they're just even though they're actually, you know, they, they've been smaller guys, but they've they're in that weight and they're comfortable in that weight and they're still. Again, you're waiting for them. You're just waiting for them to tip over the edge. So, yeah. if, so if, if Robbie Davis Jr. was 26, I go well maybe because he can just you know he can just you know, just loiter around this yeah, level a, a little bit yeah a little yeah. bit longer yeah and then and that's yeah and then and then you can push him on then. Mm. But maybe maybe this yeah. is this is for a WBA some sort of intercontinental sense. So obviously trying to position him for something and for when the belts do <laughs> fragment, you never know. Do you? Yeah, you've got to win the fight though. Javier Molina. Um, yeah, another guy, Alan Babich is back. Your favourite, Alan Babich is back. Al- is Bakich? Alan Babich is, is Bakich. Is, you love a heavyweight, don't you? He's he's a he's not a heavyweight. No, is this, <laughs> is this heavyweight or is this bridgeweight? This fight. This would be. I, I guess it would be at bridgeweight. Bridgeweight, but it's didn't a it? Because the guy was a cruiserweight. He's boxing, yeah. I think. So, oh, bridgeweight's ridiculous. I'm not happy with that. no. I'll do salt boxing. I know. We're gonna, Add another weight. Class. Have another weight class with yeah. more belts. It'd be brilliant. So he's boxing for the interim title. Um, no, but it's, yeah. do you know what feels weird is Alan Babich fighting and it's not lockdown. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, no, like, yeah. Doesn't it feel like Saturday nights in lockdown? It was like Babich is chinning someone on my TV would in it a be garden mad somewhere. Would it be mad if you in front of a crowd you got on his toes and you? Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm shy. I think this is heavyweight. You, you confuse me there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's heavy. either way the guy he's not he's not heavyweight, is he? No, exactly. Yeah, like Adam Balski's boxing. See, with Babbage, I thought, oh, he's beatable. Yeah. He, he is beatable. He walks in, he, his defence is pretty poor. He tries to roll a bit more than he does now, but you, should, you tend to think, if he stays as a heavyweight, once he boxes a heavyweight, a really good, solid jab. It's like so, someone like... Um, Dubois. Joe Joyce or, yeah. or Dubois. Yeah. Dubois, perfect, Dubois. Then you know, he, he's just physically too small, and that jab will just be like a big right hand every time he gets caught. Mm. But he's funny, he's committed. You just never know, do you? And, and he's so, like, he gets so into himself. Yeah. Like, like I've been away with him. For, we were in Gibraltar together, not on a, not on a holiday with each other as a couple. Uh, no, in the fight camp thing. Oh, at the fight, I was there, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he really, he's like, he's selling this, like, I'm I'm the, I can't, the I'm, I'm, I become the savage. And I'm going, so I remember, so I remember, I think I said to him, oh, so what are you talking about? So what are you on about, you lunatic? And he's going, no, I, I get it. I really get to it. I get into it. I get that moment. I, I understand that. If I get into the zone, yeah, yeah. it works for you. You, know, you, you saw transform yourself into this like alter ego. And he fights like that. Yeah. He fights with no... And that, that almost no care for your, for your well-being can be a massive, like a, like a massive plus going there because yeah. you've got no fear. So, and you're sharper then. You're like you're rolling under shots. And, and, and I think opponents know that as well. They think this guy doesn't give a fuck. And what he does, he throws a really crude, massively overhand right hand, o- over the top right hand. It's really crude. Because he's a short fighter, he gets lower. Yeah. It works for Can't him. see it. It's a great, it's a great shot. It's a, it's, when you're a short fighter, it's a great shot to throw. Mm. It just he lacks technique and guile in his work. And that's where you tend to think he'll get beat once he steps up a level. But I tend to think he's one of those fighters who just enjoy him. Yeah. No, he is. You, it's fun to watch. Yeah, isn't he it? is it's fun. fun. To watch. No, I, I think talk, him talking about like genuine world titles is, is probably a little bit no extreme mm. to, be, to say the least. But just enjoy him. He's fun to watch, and I mm. no, I, I do. So. He's sort of like my, my guilty pleasure. Yeah, I, I, love, I, love, I love, I love, I love a real box and I had, but he's my guilty pleasure. Where he does nothing that I that I would go was, is technical. At any stretch of the imagination, there's mm. no technique to anything he does, but he's sort of fun to watch. Yeah, I'm trying to think what the fight was. He did throw a little feint and it drew something nah, and looked something up. over the top. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember thinking he does do some stuff, but I think what happens is he finds that he has his success, like with you say, with yeah. these big shots that a taller guy can't see him coming and they do land, so he just keeps doing the same thing. Well, ultimately, he's just going, you're going there, but they're trying, they're, they've been working on him now, his team, and trying to get him like better, technically better, yeah. do, do this, do that. It revert to type. You got, yeah, he will. But you also you've got to be careful you don't lose what you've got. Yeah, yeah. Like what they done with Joshua. Mm. Make him a better all round fighter, but you took away the magic. Mm. No. Now he's a guy who thinks about, I don't want to get into Joshua to be. You got a guy, you got a guy there who's, who's, who's thinking too much. But you sometimes, like, do you want, do you want Babbage to start thinking about his work? Because mm. while he's thinking about his work, he'll be getting all boxed. Yeah. You want to turn that brain off and just go get him. Yeah. And it works for him. And he's, you know, he's 31 or something, 32. He's not, Close. he's not that far off. You know, having to think about, and I know he wants his fight. I know he calls out Hergovic every two minutes because he's yeah. compatriot and they got history. But he's not that far off, like Dubois or you know British level 
for heavyweights. No, he's not. No, and then and then he'll be he would be able to have the chance to to shut people up who say he'll get found out eventually because that's all he wants is the opportunity to do it. But he's not that far off. No. Yeah, I would chuck him in. Yeah, not, not quite. Not I wouldn't chuck him in Dubois to be fair. But um, who have they got over there? Matum around the that heavyweight. Yeah, um, Dakers. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that sort of a fight. You sort of think if you're Dakers, I wouldn't fancy. What's the yeah, point? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. He's one of those. Yeah, yeah. I should beat him. But yeah, but he's out nights work. He probably. Yeah, you never know. Uh, on the undercard as well, Chantal Cameron is back. Hope that she'd be fighting Callie Reese at this point for all the belts, yeah. but it's not. Um, she beat Mary McGee, and you know it was the tournament, and Callie Reese won her fight as well. But this isn't. This is against Victoria Noella Bustos, one of the names who's always in around that division. Fox Cecilia Breakers, Katie Taylor. Lost both fights, went yeah. the distance. You know, good name there. Chantal Cameron obviously is a kind of rising star, obviously unified world champion as well. She could be one who really benefits from this. Well, she already has, but you know, this real golden age and this crest of a wave. But even in light of Taylor Serrano, like she's the one who seems that it's got it all in front of her. You could say, no one, no one will, <laughs> you could say, you could say, you could is this say, another t-shirt coming up? Yeah, <laughs> you could say that there's more pressure on Chantal Cameron than there was on those girls on the week on yeah, the yeah. weekend because she's got it all to lose. They've set the benchmark now. Hmm. There you go, women's box to cancel women's box, and we did 1.5 million views on TV, live audience. So we sold on Madison Square Garden. We put on the fight of a fight of the ages. You know, and the and we and we sort of like you know, dismissed any gender any gender talk because the fight was stood on its own. It's a great fight. But that's no, okay. You're here. Women's boxing's arrived. Mm. But there you go. Going to perform there. Yeah. You know, if she underperforms, it's a scrappy fight, or it's technically poor, or the other girl's just rubbish, or whatever it is, then you then people will go back to go. There you go. Look. Yeah. Katie Taylor that was good, but the rest of it's rubbish again. Mm. You know what I mean? As it goes, Chantelle Cameron's quite good to watch. Yeah. Really so she can box well. She's quite aggressive. She and loves a tear up. She's a bit of a nasty streak yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. She has. Yeah. And I do think that watching that Katie Taylor fight. If that doesn't put a fire under your under your your, your belly, like mm. then nothing does. Do you know what I mean? Like even I felt like going for a run the next <laughs> day. I never, obviously, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I felt I felt it for the moment. I had, some I, pancakes. I had, I had a plate of chips at three o'clock <laughs> in the morning. And I was it then. Yeah. But you know, but if you're a boxer, certainly a female boxer, then you're up. You're on the gym. You're inspired mm. by that. So I think yeah, and you think we're here now. And you have to pass the baton, but it's a pressure. Yeah, more than it would be just the norm. The normal pressure of being a world champion and fighting, defending your title against a former world champion who's been in with, with, with obviously you know, two of the best women boxers who ever do it in mm. Brackles and and Katie Taylor. So you know you want to put on a statement and put on a if you can do a better job than they did. Yeah, they both went the distance, so stops yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. So I think it's to be even though it's this, even though this good box at welterweight, she, I think that the natural size is with. With Chantal Cameron, yeah. I would feel so. I, yeah, I think she wins quite quite conv convincingly. Bit of a but showcase, in, but it needs to be a showcase. Yeah, I mean, she needs to look good. Mm. If 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 she if she if she if it's a one sided fight, she has to dominate massively. And or if it's a war, it's a war. But yeah, yeah. but I think you know there's pressure on her to be good, and for the fight to be good, or to be technically. For people, for me, people like me who love who love boxing and and enjoy just enjoy boxing now and and love that fight on the weekend, then you know we're looking now for. I don't just want a, a tear up where you just head down swinging like a lunatic. You've got to be technical, and and Chantel can do that. Mm. Yeah, but again, there's a pressure. They got a pressure on them. There's a pressure there that they have to they have to keep that ball rolling on now. The yeah. momentum's with women now, so you've got to take got it to and take run it. with it. Yeah. Uh, across the pond, I dragged that on, didn't I? And across the pond, yeah, a little bit, but I'll take it. It's fine. Across the across the Atlantic, it's the David Derby. It's David Benavidez yeah. against David Lemieux. I don't think anyone's called it the David Derby yet. No, they are, no. It might and take they, no, they will not. That's a t-shirt. That's what one of them split scarves. You know, you get the football, the David Derby. Anyway, no, no. <laughs> it looks like to me, obviously, David Benavidez, massive favourite as a champion, and whatever Lemieux kind of over the hill, you might suggest. Yeah. It looks like guaranteed fireworks. Whatever happens, it does, but. It, they might just be raining down on David Lemieux. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, because he fights at a high pace, yeah. Benavidez, and he, he lives to throw punches in combinations, and he, he'll be aggressive. He, he has to be wary of the power of Lemieux, because even though he's, yeah. he's old and he's past Big his best, and, yeah, he's yeah. got natural power he has. But it'd be a massive upset if he does anything but get beat, yeah. David Lemieux. 
to be honest. Yeah. And I think and stopped. Ben, he stops him. Yeah. Benavidez stops him, I think. Yeah. I think he walks right through him. Because there's variety in his work. That's the thing with Benavidez. It's not just not just all long straight shots. He throws him through the middle, he works the body well, really well. And he throws from he throws before he moves his feet forward. Mm. So he gets in this and you throw it long. And then he then he reigns on you then. He doesn't lay off the hook. Good finisher. Good. That's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he's what is he? Twenty five. He's twenty five years old. Twenty five and no interim world champion with WBC at that weight. Always, when you think about him, you've got to think. And these fights, he's in the Canelo stakes, isn't he? He's in the running, and he's always linked with him. The th the thought was that when the PBC made the offer that Canelo went his own way, that that was the fight, and Charlo and whatever else. Canelo himself said they should fight each other. Jamal Jamal Charlo, the middleweight, and and Benavidez would be a great fight. They should fight each other, but. They're all waiting and hoping they'll get a Canelo fight. And for me, when you look at the timelines and the ages, Benavidez looks like the one who might just get Canelo and maybe beat him. Yeah, if you're talking about two years. You're talking two, three years when he's 28 in yeah. his prime, Canelo on the way down. But Benavidez better at that point, had a couple bigger tests, maybe beating someone like Charlo. It's a, he's, for me, looks like the one. He could be, because you've know, you got all those thing, things that you think about, you know, can, 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 he's fearless, isn't he? Can fight at a high tempo. Yeah, yeah. He's willing to willing to put it on the line, which you sort of need out. Yeah, that, it might that end up risk involved. Yeah, it might go the other way for him, and it ends up he gets knocked out. But he seems the one. That he's so fearless and so raw, and like you say, high pace. He's the one who could do the business and natural power as well. Yeah, you know, I think. Yeah, but again, it has to be down the line though. He's not. He's, you can't. Talk, he don't be Canelo now. No, nowhere near. To be honest, I think Canelo gets into him quite comfortable. Mm. To be fair, but yeah. He's looking good, and I do think in a couple of years' time he might be the one, because we're counting on Canelo, you know, showing signs of vulnerability, which he hasn't yet. But you know, if that happens in, in a couple of years, then or he shows it, shows it, you know, in his, in his next fight, whatever it is, then I think there's a, there's a risk that yeah, there's a risk that he might get, you know, the timing wrong. Something like Benavidez, because Benavidez can build his stock. Yeah. It, ultimately, it doesn't matter about good years. He needs to build his stock, because. With, with Canelo going up and down the weights, he's looking for targets and, and record-breaking stuff. So, you know, he's already won everything he can win. So you're looking at him possibly, you know, fighting another name. That's all it would be. So if Benavidez can become a star, then that fight can happen. If he doesn't, then it will never happen. Mm. He's just a risk and you're not worth the risk. Yeah. There's no financial reward. Except what I bring to the table. You need, like with Golovkin, when he boxed Golovkin and Canelo, there was, they, you know, even though he was still the bigger name, Golovkin brought something to the table as well yeah. of, of worth. So, yeah. But, yeah, but I like Benavidez. I do. I, think, I don't think he's unbeatable, to be honest. Any stretch of the imagination, I think he is beatable, but it's hard to do it. Because mm. he's a, nothing worse than a guy who can punch who throws lots of punches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, usually, they're, they're just, they're, they're more thoughtful. Yeah, they're yeah. yeah. more thoughtful. Eh? They just all bang, bang. So you, you can avoid one big shot. And then maybe the second one comes back and you're going to avoid that. With him, though, there's a flurry of punches. And you've seen some of the blister, all hurtful. Got blister enhancement. Yeah. Blister enhancement. With power as well. Yeah. 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 I feel like you mentioned there about growing stock. David Lemieux looks like could be the perfect one. A bit like when Golovkin boxed Lemieux. At, that was at MSG, wasn't it? Yes. When he stopped him. Yeah. And it was the same sort of thing. It was like, it's a firefight. And if you come out on top of it, it's probably going to be a highlight reel when people start yeah. talking about you a bit. Oh, when Saunders scored him. Yeah, 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 completely. And, and, and then never boxed for two years. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. But you know, that was his that was his step to go on and be a superstar. Yeah. Billy Joe Saunders. He never he never grabbed hold of it, unfortunately. But yeah, Lemu's a good good name to beat. But I do think now you're not beating the same Lemu. And also stylistically anyway, you'd always fancy a good Benavides against the better the best Lemu, mm. to be fair. Though that's a funner fight because Lemu would have more chance of hitting him with the left hook. Yeah. But yeah, he don't he stops the move. When you look at that little clutch of names, the Charlo, Jamal, Charlo, the even like Andre, who obviously sadly his fight with Zach Parker falling through, but they're not fighting each other. What what would be great is if they all fought each other. There's enough of them. They're fighting kind of other guys and yeah. doing other things. Charlo fighting Selecki and Benavidez fighting Lemieux. It'd be great if those two box each other at this point. And it and I feel like then they've got far more to bring to the table in the Canelo fight. Because yeah. at the moment they're just shouting and calling him a chicken and whatever, but it doesn't do anything, does it? But if they got a meaningful but, win like that. But again, though, they, okay, no, no, they're, no, you're sort of happy that boxers are more business savvy than they used yeah. to be, but it ruins it for us because <laughs> they're thinking, well, I'm not boxing him now for like a million 
dollars or whatever it would be, half mm. a million, eight hundred. I don't know what they get. I don't know what they get. Maybe they get ten million. But I can get three times the amount for a box of Canelo. So you'd write you the just void. wait. Yeah. But you know, you like you're saying, you want to, the people should be telling. But if you beat him, you do get the Canelo fight. Yeah. Because he doesn't care about you. You're nothing to Canelo. You don't even know. You choked his name off. Everyone choked his name. Jake Paul but he choked his name off, for God's sake. So, you know, you know no, you don't even, not a real boxer. But so you, you know, you got to bring something that he goes, oh, that's a marketable fight for us. That's what he wants. He, you know, he's a thrill seeker, Canelo. You can see that. So he just wants a, a, a test. Now, if he see, oh, well, he beat, you know, if he sees, oh, well, Benavidez just beat Charlo. No, in beating the moon. And it would be a massive fight, that one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be all it's, everywhere. Of course yeah. It is. yeah, it's a brilliant fight. Yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? You know, and, and, and also, no, there. It's, um, no, look at can, if Benavides can get can beat Charlo, can, can dominate his division, and then him and Canelo boxing on May the 5th or September the 17th or something, whatever it is, yeah. you know, that's you know, those two Mexican holidays. Yeah. Where does that go? Mm. Put it whatever you want to put it, can you? It's a massive event. Do you think Benavides? Size, stature-wise, will probably end up at light heavy. Do you reckon? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah he's a big, yeah. big boy, big he's lump. Boy, yeah. He's got a bit of growth. They, they, they have, I think, you know, because they, because they're in a constantly hot area, then you know they're training it helps keep their weight down. Yeah, it helps them. It does help them. But yeah, you can only hold but fat. And also, when you get older, you mature. You know, you once you get to get into sort of late twenties and early thirties, you start to fill out a bit naturally anyway. So yeah, you do have to move up. He'll be like heavy in no time. Mm. It seems yeah. like he got the power as well to look after oh, himself yeah. there. But also he has not just the power, he got that hand speed. So he got he got other good quality factors. He, he can box quite well and he got good hand speed. So he's not just a one big hitter where you sometimes you move him weight and that reduces a little bit. He's still got the hand speed to get him through anyway. So yeah, he'll be he'll be a force. And who knows, maybe one day he might just fight Joshua Boatsy or Craig Richards. At light heavyweight for all the belts. Yeah, well, you know, he could be up there. We could, we could have, we could have one of those. We could have um, Anthony Yard. Yeah, you know, hanging round. You could have him, and they're all, all great fights. Mm. You imagine that? Boxing's good like that, though, because you always get. To, ultimately, we always get to see the good fights. <laughs> Every all the fights we want to see. We I'm get. being sarcastic as hell, but literally lately we have. Yeah, to be honest, it's been a mad old May. Yeah, hey, it's good, been a mad May. Had a good time, haven't we? To be fair of it, but either way. As long as I'm there, ringside, <laughs> that's all that matters. Mm. Really. It's more about me than them, I would think. I agree. To be honest. That's the last t shirt. That's, that's, that the, is the, that's last the last t shirt. T-shirt, t-shirt, yeah. More about me than them. Exactly. Well, Barry, long may it continue. Thanks, as always, for your time. And thanks so much for watching. And we hopefully will see you at the next one. Take care.